So are you traveler, are you nomad, or are you refugee? So today I'm talking about the three different types of life on the road, whether you're a traveler, a nomad, a refugee, why it matters, and why we're talking about it today. My name is Jill. This is Jill's Nomad Survival. See you on the other side. There's a reason I wanted to talk about today the three different types of going mobile. And because it isn't just about uh, semantics or different kinds of words, they're very three different states of mind, ways of being, and also different ways of carrying your stuff with you. And so the first one is the traveler. And you know, that's mostly what you're seeing in terms of the videos about if you're really going to observe it is a more of a passive way of observing. You're not participating in the community. You're not participating in terms of building something. It's more pleasure and passive and objective. And that's a totally different way of going, which is why your hat and your walking stick can be cute, but not necessarily practical. And so we don't do a whole lot of traveling kind of stuff here. We really talk more about the other two, which we'll get to in just a moment. But I wanted to point that out. Nothing wrong with it. It's a way of being. It's not so much so what we're talking about here. The second type is what we talk mostly about here, which is the nomad. And, you know, for those of you who haven't looked it up, nomad is really the origin comes from the pastoral lifestyle where people carried a shepherd staff as opposed to a walking stick because the people, whether they were one person or they were a tribe or a group, it was a lifestyle and it was how you made your money. It's how you survived, but not in survival mode, but how you survived was being nomadic. I know people have said, well, you're not a nomad. You're just parked in one place. But technically, I'm more nomad than almost anybody because I live with livestock. <laughs> For me, nomad really means you're working, you're part of a community, you're part of a culture, you're part of a lifestyle, and it's mostly full time. It's not something you're doing passively, but it's an active way of living. So that's the second type. The third type is refugee, and that we are seeing more than ever as we see what's going on in Europe and in other places, but mostly, you know, the migration into Europe. And the difference with refugee is it's all about survival. It's not about what you take with you. It's about can you get out and can you survive? Because it's usually happening in some kind of emergency. So again, different state of mind, different state of being. That's why I would wear a baseball cap because I'd want a hood, I'd want to hunker down, I'd want to hide. So those are the three types of going mobile or life on the road that I'm talking about. And again, I'm saying that because as you make your plans, several of you have, you know, emailed me or in your comments, you're excited about your future nomad life. It's an easier way to organize it. You know, an example is, is if you are being nomadic as a lifestyle, you have to bring your tools with you. If you're traveling, you really only need the bare minimum. So it's a, it's a different way of thinking. Um, and I also wanted to add in honor of this video, there are bugs and rabbits and wind and all kinds of stuff going on. So <laughs> in honor of this video, uh, what I have done recently is I've updated my just walk away and here comes the wind. And what that is, is it's a, it's not a bug out bag list. You know, most people, when they talk about, you know, when things go bad, survival mode, you know, what are you going to grab and put in your bag and run away with? And, and that's good. That's important. That's helpful. But that isn't what the Just Walk Away book series is, or book is, booklet is about. It's really about rethinking if you had to just walk away. It's also a really good guide if you're going to just drive away. I hope you can hear this. The wind is going crazy. And it's also really good if you're just trying to simplify. So it's not a bug out bag list because one of the things you need to do if you're thinking about going nomadic or this type of life, you know, one is why am I doing it? 
How long am I doing it? Am I going to still have storage or is this everything coming with me? Um, and also, you know, what is going to be my way of transport? You know, a backpack is one conversation, a trailer or an RV is one conversation, a van is a very different conversation because it's so much smaller. So all those things that you can figure out ahead of time help you decide what you need to do in terms of simplifying, what kind of uh, plan you want to have. And then, you know, if we do go refugee style, which uh, this is what I always say, uh, as much as we like to fantasize about being prepared if anything really bad happens, the reality is if you look around the world and it's mostly war, if really bad things happen, people pick up and start walking. And that's going to be especially true if the electricity goes out and our cars don't work because we won't be able to get gas. So it's a, I don't think it's a meant to be scary. I'm just throwing it out there as a way to think about it because I think it's a good use of your time as we start to plan and prepare for whatever future's coming, whether you're simplifying, whether you're going full on nomad, whether you're traveling, or if things get really bad and we become refugees. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I think the wind is going to outlast me this time. So I'm going to say thank you for spending this time with me. Again, my name is Jill. You can find me at JillElizabeth.net. The link to that book is below. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thank you.